Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the HIS HD 4850i Cooler 4 as well as the HD 4870i Cooler X3 HDMI video cards. What's included with both of these video cards is an installation guide, software and drivers, a case badge, a game. The 4850 though includes just one power adapter and no crossfire bridge. The 4870 includes two power adapters and one crossfire bridge. Both the HIS HD 4850i Cooler 4 and the HD 4870i Cooler X3 have a PCI Express interface of two compared to the older video cards which has a PCI Express interface of one. Both of these video cards are based on the RV770 core built on the 55 nanometer manufacturing process and has 956 million transistors. These video cards have different coolers. The 4850 comes with the iCooler 4 and the 4870 comes with the iCooler X3. The 4850i Cooler 4 cooler has a base plate that comes in direct contact with the GPU but not the memory and blows cool air over the aluminum fins. The 4870i Cooler X3 cooler is quite large and it's comprised of a plastic top with a blower style fan. This fan pulls in cool air and then forces it across the heatsink and then pours all the warm air outside the case. Now if you note here as well, there are plenty of heat pipes, but the base only comes in contact with the core and not the memory. These video cards have one HDMI connection, which fully supports 7.1 channel audio, a VGA connection, and a DVI connection. Also note that each video card comes with cross-fire bridge connections. The 4850 requires just one 6-pin power cable connection, but the 4870 requires two 6-pin power cable connections. Note that the maximum power consumption of each of these is around 300 watts. Now the 4850 is a little bit less than the 4870, but still a quality power supply that can handle a load is very crucial, especially in a multiple video card crossfire configuration. The 4850 has a core speed of 625 megahertz and the one gigabyte of GDDR3 256 bit memory is 1986 megahertz DDR. It comes with 800 stream processing units for vertex pixel and geometry data, 40 texture units and 16 raster operations. The fill rate is 10 gigapixels per second. The texture fill rate is 25 gigatexels per second and the memory bandwidth is 63.5 gigabytes per second. The 4870 has a core speed of 750 megahertz and the 512 megabytes of GDDR5 256 bit memory is 3.6 gigahertz DDR. It comes with 800 stream processing units for vertex pixel and geometry data, 40 texture units and 16 raster operations. The fill rate is 12 gigapixels per second, the texture fill rate is 30 gigatexels per second, and the memory bandwidth is 115.2 gigabytes per second. This video card has too many technologies to mention in detail in this video, but let me cover the main ones. Custom filter anti-aliasing. Unified super scalar shader architecture. Tessellation. High definition multimedia interface output support and DirectX 10 which is exclusive to Windows Vista operating system. DirectX 10 is the key technology that stands out because it offers much better graphics than DirectX 9. In this video you can clearly see the difference between DirectX 9 and DirectX 10. DirectX 10 offers dynamic lighting, added detail, realistic shadows, richer scenes, complex environments, and so on. This is possible because it manages data transfers between the CPU and video card much better. This results in optimal use of the CPU and video card for special tasks like graphic effects, AI, and physics, resulting in the best performance possible and offers an unreal gaming experience.
Additionally, another new exciting technology that's impressive is a Vivo HD video and display platform, which essentially enables superior quality and a high definition visual experience. Both of these video cards really offer a tremendous amount of bang for the buck. They perform really well, but of the two, of course, the best one to go with would be probably the HD 4870. But overall, both of these products are fantastic. I rate the 4850 a great and the 4870 a kick-ass. Until next time, take care.